its late spring on Canada's Fundy Coast. A new day is just beginning as gulls circle overhead, eagerly awaiting the first sign of food. The Bay of Fundy comprises a tremendously abundant marine ecosystem. Its cold waters contribute to large quantities of grill and other small animals which provide food for many larger creatures. It is around this time of year that numerous species of migratory and marine birds will stop here. The abundant rich food sources found in this region make it a perfect stop site on flight paths along the Atlantic coastline. Over 250 species of bird have been seen here during migration periods. As the new day's sun rises, it sheds light on one of the Bay of Fundy's most enduring features. The tide. Only here can the highest tides in the world be found. The indigenous Micmac of this region once believed that the large tides were caused by the splashing fin of a giant whale far offshore. They are in fact caused by what is known as the funnel effect. From a ripple caused by the continental shift and the retreat of the Ice Age, the Bay of Fundy formed as a massive natural funnel. This causes the gravitational pull of the moon to significantly exaggerate the tidal effect. As water gains more momentum by rushing into a smaller space. While the exposed seafloor brings food for some animals, it can mean life or death for others. Shallow water dwellers like this young green crab are left extremely vulnerable and retreat under patches of seaweed in tidal pools. This large male adult copepot furiously guards his juvenile female mate until her final mold. These small crustaceans are resilient creatures, but they're easy targets for the average scavenger. Mollusks will anchor themselves to rocks to make it more difficult for predators to swallow them up. Their color helps them to blend in among the sand and rocks. Starfish gather along the coastline to spawn this time of year. Though they have a somewhat hard exterior, their lack of quick mobility seems to be their downfall in avoiding predation. Overhead, flocks of double-crested cormorant are just arriving for the season. These birds come from as far as the West Indies and Central America to lay their eggs and feed. But they aren't heading to the tidal pools. They're on their way to a nearby salt marsh, a type of coastal wetland. Salt marshes are one of the most ecologically rich habitats on Earth. They play an important role in the marine food chain by providing food and shelter for many coastal creatures. Salt marshes are formed in protected sea bays associated with rivers. Although they appear to be flat, uniform, expanses of grasslands, salt marshes are dissected by many small creeks, channels, and ponds. Plants and animals living here have had to adapt to the sea's tidal rhythms. The black duck breeds and spends its winters in the marsh. While migrating birds such as these Canada geese use salt marshes to rest and feed during their long migration journeys. The majestic great blue heron often feeds in salt marshes, using its long legs to wade through shallow water and spearing fish with its sharp bill. Salt marsh plants give life beyond their death. Dead plants are broken down by tiny animals and fungi, and these plant bits are swept away by the tides, providing food for life outside the marsh.
during the summer months along the Fundy Coast, thick blankets of fog are commonplace. The fog, generated by the bay, is so thick that it can whisk its way across the shores to permeate the lands and forests for miles. The fog is formed when warm, moist air moves off the land and over the cold fundy waters. As the air cools, it condenses to form millions of microscopic water droplets suspended in midair. Above the fog and the daily tireless onslaught of the tides, stand the tall and distinctive forests surrounding the Great Bay. The evergreen trees are the most prevalent. They are rugged weather-worn stands, having even learned to take root on the rocks and jagged shores. The forests of the Fundy Coast are teeming with life, big and small. Bumblebees are gathering pollen to feed their young. They are much less opportunistic feeders than their cousin the honeybee, gathering only a few short days worth of food at a time. Resembling flora, more than fauna, this luna moth is cleverly camouflaged. She will stay in this adult form for only seven days, laying close to 300 eggs before dying and leaving her offspring to fend for themselves. But not all new life in the forest is so independent. This mother porcupine, out on a walk with her young one, can never be too cautious. The baby porcupine has yet to develop his thick prickled coat and without his mother's guidance, could wander off and become the perfect meal for a hungry predator. Other small mammals like the rabbit are often preyed upon as well. White-tailed deer in this region are lucky. Would be predators for them like the cougar or the coyote are uncommon here. Because of this, deer populations along the Fundy Coast are continually on the rise. So, who are the predators of the Fundy Coast? There is the red fox. These small dog-like mammals are agile and lightly built. With coats of long lustrous fur, they have excellent eyesight, acute hearing, and a keen sense of smell, all of which help them greatly when hunting. They typically feed on smaller mammals such as squirrels and rabbits. Young foxes travel hundreds of kilometers from their birthplace to seek out new territories.